Welcome again to our morning worship and prayer. Kumusta kayo? I'd like to begin reading from Deuteronomy 32 in verse 4. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. As we come to God in worship, let's go ahead and recognize that God's justice and uprightness is always true and real, especially in your family and in your own situations. Let's come and worship God together. May your praises live in every word we speak. And with every gift of breath we breathe you in. All the words that you have done consume my heart. But when all the earth compares to who you are. When all the earth compares to who you are, a thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift into your name. A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift up once again. All creation lift his voice, declare until the end, oh Lord, how great. Your praises live in every word we speak, and with every gift of breath we breathe you in. All the works that you have done consume my heart, who in all the earth compares to who you are. to who you are a thousand hallelujahs God we lift into your name a thousand hallelujahs God we lift up once again all creation lift his voice declare until the end oh Lord how great Till the end, oh Lord, I 
Lord, thank you. We acknowledge you as the one who's fully in control of everything that's happening in our lives and that we can always trust you and that we, we can freely approach you and present our needs before you so that you might intervene in each of our lives. Lord, would you do that again for each one of our families in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Maganda umaga po ulit. We're reading now from Genesis 18. And then afterwards, we'll explain further where we'll go this morning. In Genesis 18, in verse 22, So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? Today we're continuing, uh, we're continuing to talk about God's attributes. Particularly, this week we're talking about God being just. Now, in Scripture, the words justice and righteousness are often interchangeable. So when we say that God is just, we're saying that God is just and righteous. Now, what does that mean? And what are the implications of God being just and righteous in terms of how you perceive the things that are happening in your life? And what are the implications in your own life? Kailangan ba ikaw din maging just and righteous din, katulad ni Lord? Now, let's begin with a simple definition. God being just means that he always acts according to justice and he is himself the standard of righteousness. God always acts according to justice and is himself the standard of righteousness. You see, justice is one of God's moral attributes. And it's, it's also called one of God's communicable attributes. Ang ibig sabihin po nun, pwede nating mamana, pwede nating matutunan, pwede nating makuha, at uh, pwede nating, uh, when, when it, it rubs off on us, then we are also able to walk in God's justice and righteousness. Now, going back to the passage, uh, if you notice the story, this was when the angels were about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham was asking God, that he would spare the city if only a few people are righteous in it. Because he was actually thinking of his uh, nephew, si Lot. Now, true enough, si Lord nagpaunlak. You know, God told him, yes, I will spare the city kahit sampu lang. Pero ang ending nga is that, you know, there were not even 10 righteous people in the city. So God still had to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But he was able to spare Lot and his family. Now, in light of that situation, reading from verse uh, 25, Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked. Now, this, that's a sticky situation, right? Ang hirap nga naman talaga niyan. Lord, will you put the righteous to death with the wicked? Now, take a look at our pandemic, at the pandemic we're in right now. More than 2.5 million people have already died. And probably that's both the righteous and the unrighteous together. How do you make sense of that, Lord? Will you really put to death the righteous and the wicked together? And God has this pandemic, uh, you know, this pandemic has challenged our faith. That, Lord, could, could you, how could you still be just with that situation, with that kind of situation? Well, we will go back to an understanding of who God is. That God is always just and righteous in all His dealings with man. And that is part of His character. So therefore, there has to be another explanation. Could there be another explanation why all of this is happening? Further, we'll read. It says there, Far be that from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just. Let me highlight that phrase, the judge of all the earth. You see, God has a context for judgment. God has a context for His decisions. God has a context for what He is doing, for everything that He does and allows on the earth. And in fact, His context is all of the earth. 
Now, how will that help us to understand and trust in God being just and righteous despite everything that is happening? Now, have you heard of the butterfly effect? Well, it's actually a theory that has in many ways been validated. Well, the butterfly effect simply states that, the, you know, um, that many interconnected action reactions uh, could actually result in one in you know in a small thing a small thing happening on one side of the earth let's say for example the flapping of a butterfly's wings kaya sa tinawag na butterfly effect could actually result in many interconnected action reaction chains that would now that could now result in a hurricane on the other side of the earth so isang napakaliit na bagay lang like the flapping of a butterfly's wings could create a hurricane on the other side of the earth now think about that Think about the interconnectedness of the world. Think about the interconnections of situations. Of one thing, that's ha one thing that happened in China, in Wuhan, that has now impacted the rest of the earth. God sees all of that. That is God's context for His judgments and His decisions. Now, let's add another dimension to that. Imagine the 7 billion people in how we are interconnected in all that's happening around us. But imagine us over time. Yung buong timeline ng billions of people and the way their decisions and their situations has, has impacted us 10 or 20 generations later. So it's not just all of the people living here now, but it's also all of the people who lived before and all who will live after. That is God's context for His decisions. When God makes a judgment call, he is the judge of all the earth and he makes these decisions on the on you know coming from that knowledge that full immediate complete knowledge of everything that is happening on the earth and everything that has happened in the past and therefore because he knows way more than we do he understands way more than we do we should probably trust him that his character still reflects in his decisions that his character being just still reflects in his decisions and what he allows in your life and in your family now abraham was not yet done he would say this he says far be that from you shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just can we trust that god will always do what is just in all his dealings with man well one aspect of his, we, we already said that the way his, his context for judgment is the whole earth. It's his knowledge of everything that's happening in the whole earth. But in addition to that, it's also his purpose. Purpose. He is working something out in the earth until today. God is fully at work in everything that's happening ever since last year and until today and even way beyond that. Now, I, I remember... Um, when, when I was still an elementary student, uh, I noticed this particular setup uh, in school that our principal sometimes, in our school sometimes gets visited by the district superintendent. The district superintendent is the one that oversees our principal in the school. And that word superintendent is very meaningful. It means someone who has a super, meaning above, intentions. Meaning the superintendent uh, has intentions that are above that of the principal. He knows more. And he, is, he oversees the principal for that reason that there's a purpose at the back of his mind. Did you know that God has a superintending purpose over everything that's happening in all the earth? It means that he has intentions that are above us that we may never truly understand, but we can trust that he is carrying out his purpose. And in the end, that purpose is a reflection of his greatness and goodness that will affect, that will permeate all of the earth and every single one of our lives. You see, God is advancing His kingdom. God is causing His glory to fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. And we can trust that on the basis of God's knowledge, on the basis of His purpose, and on the basis of His character, God is always just in all of His dealings. Let me say that again. The judge of all the earth will always do what is right according to his character, his knowledge, and his purpose. Now, you know the story of the book of Job. Job. That was exactly the situation of his friends. They failed to understand God's justice uh, in a whole way, in a comprehensive way. They were saying, Job, 
because you're experiencing punishments. You see, God's justice is meted out to us, especially in relation to sin, uh, through punishment and reward. Meaning that God punishes sin because God is just and that He rewards righteousness. So, in the mind of Job's friends, they were saying, Job, because you've experienced punishment one after another and punishment so severe, it means that you've probably sinned against God in a major way. And, well, we understand that Job was innocent. And in the end, at the, at the end of the book of Job, God would vindicate Job and say, Job did not sin against me. Job did, now, that, that meted out a punishment against him. God had a superintending purpose over Job's life. That in the end, even though it seems that for a temporary season he was punished with a lot of suffering, in the end, God still revealed himself to Job in this way. You know, he, he, he in fact did not answer Job's question. Lord, why are you doing this? No, he simply, he, God simply went back to the idea that I am the creator and you are my creation and you would never understand the intents of your creator but you will have to trust me that I am doing something in your life. I have a superintending purpose over you that I am carrying out. And in the end, we know that how God restored Job. In the end, we know how God even doubled the things that Job had and how God rebuked the Job's friends for not being able to represent God's justice on the matter. The judge of all the earth will always do what is right according to his character, knowledge, and purpose. So how do we respond to that? Well, for starters, we must recognize that God is just in everything that he's doing in your life. And we must trust him. We must recognize and acknowledge that everything that God has done, that God is doing, and that God will do through, uh, to, to you and to your family, it's always just and righteous. And you can trust this God. Now, but now, the second major implication of God's justice and righteousness is that we must also walk like Him. To walk in righteousness, to walk in the light. In a, that's a good uh, illustration of what it means to walk in righteousness. You see, when we walk in the light, when you look at what people would do, when you th think about the things you're doing right now in your life, would you be doing that if everyone knew? Would you be doing that if you were doing that in public? Many of the sins that we do persist in darkness. Yung mga bagay na hindi makikita ng ibang tao. In fact, yun ang dahilan kung bakit may kasama siyang shame. Kaya ramdam mo agad na I won't do this in front of people because this is shameful. You immediately know that what I'm doing is probably unrighteous. I need to learn to walk in righteousness and walk in the light because that is who my God is. God is just and righteous and I am called to be like Him. Now, the, the good news though is this. We can actually walk in righteousness because God gives you, bestows on you, His righteousness through the gospel. Such that for everyone who believes in the finished work of Christ on the cross and trusts in Jesus as His Lord and as His Savior, the Lord, uh, the, and you come to Him in repentance, turning away from your sin, asking God to cleanse you, to save you, to give you salvation and eternal life. For a person who approaches God in that way, and many of you who are listening here, you've actually done that already at some point in your life. In that moment, the Lord forgives you, cleanses you from all unrighteousness, and He bestows His righteousness on you. So therefore, you can actually simply, you can actually walk in righteousness because you'll simply live out who you already are in Christ. Because of Christ and His work in your life and the salvation that He has done in you, in your life, you can now simply walk in who you already are. Walk in that righteousness. Walk in the light. Be Christ-like. Be just like your Father. All of that to say that the judge of all the earth will always do what is right and just. Let's trust Him and let's be like Him. Let's pray together. Lord, I'm asking you now, Lord, for blessing on each one of these families listening watching, asking you, Lord, that you would enable us to encounter your righteousness in a greater measure. Allow us to trust you. Help us to trust you, Lord. Help us to know that what you're doing in our life is always out of your righteousness and justice and out of your knowledge, out of your purpose, out of your character, and we can trust you fully. Lord, today we also surrender and ask for forgiveness in areas, in our, areas of darkness in our lives, areas of unrighteousness. Lord, we surrender these areas of sin we turn away from it and ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all of this unrighteousness. Allow us to walk just like you would. 
Lord, thank you. Would you do that for us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to worship God together. to pray for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn His face towards you and grant you peace. The Lord bless you everyone and enjoy the rest of your day.